Welcome back to Market on Close. Stocks ended up across the board. Every sector, every factor. It was a broad rally. It was pretty sizable, too, for the small caps in particular. Everywhere else, less than a percent. But still a nice dose of bullish optimism on the back of arm holdings. Certainly playing a role here. Got Nicole Petalides joining us from the New York Stock Exchange and Kevin Green on the line. Uh, how are the, uh, how's the energy up there, uh, Nicole? Because uh, I know it wasn't uh, you know, at that exchange necessarily, but it was still a pretty big day for traders. The energy is palpable. It is exciting day here today. First of all, the Dow has its best day in five weeks. People are talking about ARM because it really opens the floodgates and excitement of the idea that IPOs are back, tech is back, opportunity could be back. And so it was received beautifully, moved higher, and stays up and finishes on the close around $63, about 20% higher on the day. And you have every Every single sector, like you said, Oliver, doing great today. So I think that's really where we stand at this point. And the S&P goes above 4,500. Things feel pretty good today. And I don't want to sound, you know, with like I have too much exuberance, but it really is a great day and it feels good. Well, I mean, arm ripped to 66 bucks there at the end. Whew. So it went out oh, with yeah. the bang. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, uh, could have easily faded. I was. Uh, kind of cynical earlier this morning because it seemed like every other thing was pointing in the direction of the stuff that gets in the way of bullish momentum, higher interest rates, higher dollars. So the fact that we cruise right through that, that either tells us, I guess, the market is complacent and not paying attention to the problems around the corner, or, Kevin, it's telling us that maybe those aren't that big of problems anymore, that we can handle the progress that we've made in rates, we can handle a higher dollar if the economy doesn't break down. I mean, we've got appetite to buy up uh, five billion of an IPO. I'm not sure if that's the case, Oliver. I think there's definitely a couple of different factors that we saw here today. Now, obviously, the IPO definitely brought some uh, you know, excitement when it came to uh, the marketplace. But when you look at some of the leaders, uh, especially the sectors, you have utilities, you have real estate, which continues to move to the upside. That's actually a sleeper uh, sector at this point in time. And, and then you have materials uh, moving to the upside. Now, everything was in the green for the most part here today, but that's still a defensive stance. You like to see green on the screen, but when you look at some of those big cap or mega cap names, they didn't really perform as well as we would have expected outside of Google. Uh, so I think uh, we need just another couple of uh, trading sessions to really figure out how we're going to process this. The PPI number came in really hot, and I would say that's something of a concern. And when you're looking at the energy prices from crude oil to heating oil to natural gas, I think that's going to be a uh, pressure point the latter half of the year. And that's why I think the bond yields did go up today. I think the bond market did realize the, the risk factors that they saw in the PPI print. I think the equity market is just trying to uh, you know blow, blow past this 45 500 level we're trying to get to 4600 and we kind of talked about that rotation from the uh, the quarterly options here that actually happened like last week and and really started to uh, clear the way for the bulls okay hey adobe's out let's talk that and uh do do appreciate that take as well um uh, it's a good point that you know we had more of the defensive groups leading for sure Kind of like yesterday the stuff that was up was low volatility and min vol strategies uh all right that being said Adobe's our focus here as uh, this is a company that should have something to show for itself in terms of AI developments from a product standpoint and uh, not just a hardware standpoint. I really feel like this has got to be one of the clear winners of uh, the software side. Earnings did come in ahead of the estimate. They were looking for 398. They just reported 409. That's the uh, EPS for the trailing third quarter there. Sales also just edged out expectations, but by a, a almost insignificant amount. Um, depends which estimate you look at, but Street was looking for about 4.87. They reported 4.89, so it's a marginal beat there. Um, and their uh, digital media revenue up 11%, so they do have some growth engines here. Experience up 10%. You know, to be able to grow double digits for a couple of these categories for them is important, Nicole. Uh, but I do wonder if one of, if this will kind of come down to their language and uh, ultimately their unveil of new products. Well, you know, when you talk about a double beat, that's always a good start, right? And the headline reads as record revenue. And the last quarter, that headline read as record revenue. So 
certain things are certainly going right for this company. Um, it's had a run, obviously, year to date. It's up about 64%. But you did see a digital media revenue up 11%, digital experience revenue up 10%. This record revenue to which I'm referring, and a new era of generative AI. So that's part, partly what everybody's really banking on when it comes to Adobe. Um, the strong demand for creative cloud, document cloud, experience cloud, and the cash flow and, and buybacks have also, cash flow and buybacks have helped this company as well. Returning that money back to shareholders has been something people like and seeing the cash flow look, it had been looking pretty good. I want to delve into that a little more, but that has also been a plus. Yeah, okay. Uh, double digits here and technically a double beat. Good enough to keep this stock going, Kevin? Yeah, definitely, especially when you're looking at the areas of the business that continue to grow and uh, exceed expectations. So digital experience is one area that the market was really expecting to see some growth. Around 8.9% year over year was the expectation. So they definitely beat on that area. But I think the shining light when you are looking at this earnings announcement is actually the ARR when it comes to that particular business. They actually reported that coming in at 464 million. That's for digital media. The street was looking for 410 million. So they are seeing the demand there. They have rolled out several different products and upgrades for their, their suite of products, if you will. And it looks like the market is starting to eat that up. And that's why we are seeing the guide to the upside higher than what the street's expectations are. I think this is a really good print. Hopefully uh, the stock can hold this price move in the uh, after hours here. Okay. Uh, valuation wise, lofty uh, uh, or reasonable uh, given their potential uh, going forward, Kevin? Because uh, it's been on a nice run. <laughs> Uh, who cares about valuations these days, uh, Oliver? I think right now the market's really focusing on what's going to happen in the next 12 months here. And if you look at some of their peers, they are valued pretty high, you know, pretty high compared to their peers. But they've been able to, to show it both on the top bottom line and as well as the innovations. And they continue to inform the street consist on a consistent basis of the, uh, uh, you know, the products that they're continuing to to roll out here. So. It is expensive, but the, the street has been accepting that over uh, you know the last couple of uh, quarters here. Okay. The share is kind of coming off a little bit here, um, uh, even though uh, you know we closed at 550, so they're basically kind of even at this point. This is definitely one where I think the call comes in, you know, uh, because there were early, like immediately, like the, like the month or two after uh, the big AI breakthrough uh, over the past year, they were already putting up like uh, demonstrations of what it of what it could do and what the product could do. But I, I do wonder um, if that's going to bring in new buyers necessarily and, uh, and and when too, because a lot of people use this for professional work, of course. And if not everybody is kind of on the same page, then you may not feel the pressure to buy it. I, you know, so this might be something that kind of takes some time, uh, uh, perhaps, Nicole, to, to infiltrate the industry. Yeah, well, you know what? I think they seem to be in the right place at the right time. You can't say that this was a Agreed. pandemic stock, and this is something that people do use, as you noted, in the office on a daily work schedule. So that is some good news just on the on the base case. And the fact that they're bringing in this new era of generative AI only gives them possibilities going forward to have a double beat. Um, the outlook looks at least in line or higher. Um, that seems to be good. You know, this, this stock generally generally has a tendency to gap up or gap down after earnings. So I'm going to watch for any big moves, too, because you might see a lot of volatility with a name like this as well. The P.E., which is above 50, um, shows you it's no yeah. cheap stock, but nothing in tech is. All right. Firefly. Yeah, Oliver, just real, That's the name real of their quick here. tool, this by the way. That's probably out. the reason why we're seeing. We're probably yeah, seeing ahead, the stock move to the downside here because it does look like they're going to issue some commercial paper that's going to be unsecured. So the market's probably figuring mm -hmm. out or trying to wonder why do you need to issue uh, commercial paper at this point in time when your stock's up and you have cash on hand. So it looks like that's probably one of the reasons why the streets probably are scratching their head here. Why do you need uh, the debt markets when you've been able to perform over the last you know year, year and a half? Got it. Okay. Um, good uh, eyes there. So maybe a little issuance coming to market. And that... Uh, new application that they're gonna have right now you can basically from what I understand if you already sign up for like a Photoshop or have Adobe Premiere or something the Firefly generations you have a limited number you can make 
And so then they upsell you to basically, you know, once you get past like 500 or 1,000 or whatever. So it seems like a pretty good business model, uh, but maybe it'll take some time here. Thanks, team. That could be recurring revenue. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, should be low-hanging fruit for them. But um, this sounds like a video game. Yeah, pretty. I mean, more it's... suits, more suits for the guy. <laughs> my, and every time my kid asks me for more money for the next outfit for his guy. That's right. So this is like this is what I feel like this is. It basically, it's, uh, you know, it's a video game essentially. Appreciate yeah. it, team. Nicole Petalini's Kevin Green.